What's up everyone? My name is Melissa McCack and this is Teach the Teach, where I teach you how to teach a board game. And in this video, I'll be covering Shadows Over Camelot. Now for the purposes of this video, I'll be assuming that you're teaching this to new players of the board gaming hobby, right? If you're teaching this to veterans, I would skip over some of the stuff that I'll be covering in this video. But for now, if you are teaching this as like a gateway game, I would start off by just saying what a co-op game is, right? Where all of us are teaming up against the board and trying to beat the game itself. However, there's a traitor in this game, so letting them know that one of us is actively trying to make sure that the rest of us lose. That's how they win. Awesome. So then you can get right into the bulk of the game. I would go into the lore, okay, and making sure they understand this is about King Arthur and his round table, and how this game tries to push that theme. Then I would go straight into the objective, what the loyal people are trying to do and what the traitor is trying to accomplish. And then I go into how the game ends. This is all to show them what's going on, why it's going on, and how the game ends. That way they have some sort of foundation on how the game plays. And I always try to make sure everybody's playing as quickly as possible. This game is a little bit difficult because you have to sort of teach what all of these different quests are and it could really bog down the rules explanation, but hopefully things could go a little bit smoothly. So I first start off with the loyalty cards because now that everybody knows what their objective is in terms of if they're loyal or if they're a traitor, it's fun to start giving them their loyalty cards, letting them feel the cards and feel as though they're starting to play. They're getting their roles and everything. And then once I hand out all the roles, I make sure that they each read their objective. That way they understand exactly what they're trying to do. And then I go into what happens when they're accused. They could read that. That way they know already a couple of things that they need to know in order to win. Then I start going into, well, I skip the general um, consensus phase. I don't know what it's called, but where everybody's playing their white card in the middle of the table and everybody's saying, oh, I'll take this, whatever. I skip that if I'm teaching that to new players because they don't really know what those white cards mean. So I skip over that and then I go straight into the progression of evil phase. I say, all right, you could take a look at your character sheet and it tells you, the three different actions that you can for that you could do for progression of evil and this tells them a little bit of stuff right so they already know the siege engines are bad things because they know that's how the game ends they know about losing life points because you don't want to die in this game but the black cards you might want to explain to them hey listen those are bad every single one of those is bad and they'll change the state of the game for the benefit of evil and then they could decide what they would like to do and they could get right into playing. At this point, I make some sort of recommendation to them. I usually say something like you could lose a life point because it's not totally necessary right now. You have a lot of it right now, but that it's totally up to them. They could do whatever they want. So then you go ahead and let them do whatever their action is for the progression of evil. Now this is where things get a little bit more complicated because you're starting to tell them about their heroic action and pointing them again to their character saying, hey, listen, it lists out everything. That's what's so great about uh, Shadows Over Camelot. It gives you a, a nice little cheat sheet of how everything plays, but you do have to explain what all the quests are. I usually start by going with Excalibur. This tells them, hey, listen, this is a group quest. Anybody can come here, as many of us can come here. And I like to start off with this one because it's the easiest. You just discard whatever card you want face down. Perfect. So now they understand a little bit about group quests. And I stick with that. I stick with the group questing and I go straight to the grail. This is another easy one because the picture of the card is right there on the board, letting them know this is another group quest and how to succeed in that. I skip over what happens when these boards flip over. When it's coming close to that point, then I'll let them know what happens, but you don't have to let them know right now. Another thing uh, I go into is the other group quest, which then becomes the poker phase. If you have some poker players, fantastic. They'll understand it. They'll see some sort of familiarity, which is great. If you don't have poker players, all they have to do is know how to count or match cards. So it's not that big of a deal. So I go straight into the picks and the axes. Another group quest, they're both the same, which is great. You could couple them together, letting them know about the straight. Perfect. Done. Then you're done with your group quest. You could go straight into the single quest. 
which are your tournament and your Lancelot's armor. You could teach that at the same time and letting them know these two places are singles, right? Only uh, one person can go to those places. So now you have your groups and your singles and you're pretty much ready to go at that point. You could say, where would you like to go? You could pick, pick one of those heroic actions, go to one of these quests, do whatever. Also, as you're explaining these, don't forget to mention that you could get these little powers, right? And letting them know the powers are right on your character sheet. You don't even have to tell them about it. It's very self-explanatory. They can read it. At this point, when the person is choosing their heroic action, they might want some sort of guide as to what they might want to do first. That's when I point them to all, everybody, read your special ability because this might guide you in what you might want to be doing. So everybody could go ahead and read that and then you're pretty much off to the races at that point. The only thing I've skipped over so far is King's, King Arthur's round table. I don't bring that up until a little bit later in the game where there are several siege engines out, maybe a few, and then you say, okay, another thing you could do is something at King Arthur's table where you can actually destroy these siege engines. And at that point, they pretty much know everything there needs to be known about the game. All right, well, I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. If you have any other things that you like to do to teach this game, let us know. Let's start a little discussion on how everybody teaches this game. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.